Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to Views on the Continent on your Pan-African channel, Afrique Media. Today is the 1st of August, 2023. And ladies and gentlemen, I have one main topic for us to discuss for this edition. We're going to be talking about the Russia-Africa Summit, which took place on the 26th, 27th in Russia, in St. Petersburg. And the summit, a lot of things were said in the summit, but we're going to focus on... Uh, um, what President Putin say, uh, said, and we're also going to look at a resume of what uh, went through between the African leaders and the Russian president. One of the things we took note was when Putin said he was going to help Africa fight against neocolonialism. So we're going to talk about today, uh, talk about that today, and also looking at the fact that this summit was said to be an economic and humanitarian summit. What went on there? How is it going to benefit Africa? Is it going to work? Because we have had a lot of such summits. After that, what next? Was did he, is it going to have any impact on the African continent? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are going to look at for this edition. So, to analyze this topic with me, I have two gentlemen, one in the studio and the other uh, uh, out through Zoom, who is going to join us in analyzing this particular topic. We have uh, Mr. Patrick Popper, who is a geopolitical analyst in Vietnam and an expert at the Center for Geopolitical Studies in Belgrade. Good afternoon to you. You're welcome to the program. Hello? Is Patrick getting us? Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much. Greetings from Austria. Okay. Thank you for joining us. So I have in the studio with me Dr. Akujon. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Uh, Manuela, one point is a pleasure on the Pan African channel, Africa Media, to talk again Africa. And they just ended a summit in Russia. And many looked at them and think, like again, they have come begging, begging for wheat, begging for flour, and all what not we can imagine, that when I look at African leaders sitting beside a single European president, it is shocking that 70 years after independence, Africans still be believe that they can't feed themselves, they can't create a solidarity movement among themselves, they are unable to talk among themselves, they are unable to talk with their own people, but then always ready to move abroad as stooges. It becomes very funny that at this very time, when Russia is unable to maintain good relationship with its own neighbors, in fact, a tyrant and a dictator within, we have recent times in the world, claiming that neocolonialism should be history in Africa, and that it is time for him to supply free weapons and even fight those who are not for Africa. It is again at the same moment that we are thinking that military coup d'etats in Africa have been encouraged and promoted by the Russians. And many others have clapped to that extent. Is it really possible for Africans to believe that an external party will be more concerned about their security than they themselves? And that several times democratically elected leaders said are twisted in favor of Russian supported military coups. Is that really a way forward? Is it a leeway, a leeway to African democracy or a new system of governance? Or that the Russians are simply trying to use the African soil to get a lot of opinion and oppression against or pressure against the West or the Europeans and Americans, that it is time for them too to go for the race for colonies. And that coming for colonies, they put it on the agenda, they have security aspect to sell. And that today, Russian weapons and might can only be tested and again threatened in Africa if they can win more souls. Winning more souls in, same, in terms of security, is this what Africans need? Is this what Africans want? For an African, a gun was not made to be used against human beings, but it was then made to kill animals and why not fight other wild bees. Today, guns in Africa have become a permanent instrument of governance. And many, those who believe that the Russian example of non-interference or policy of non-interference with domestic activities of the nation is what they have to be applauded. And today, many, those who think 40 years after they remain in office, think the Russian example remains the perfect one. What have they done when such liberties were given to them 
What have they done to their own very people when they are giving power to manage? Funds and loans given to them in the name of the people are today being siphoned again back to the same nation, buying world and other amenities. Will Russia come to resolve the uncontrolled corruption in Africa? Will Russia come to build economy or grow food to feed Africans, even though with vast land, uncultivated, forests unexploited, the underneath soil unexploited, will Russia do this in favor of Africa? Even when some security packages have been made available by Russia, who pays for the rest? And how much are we going to be paid? Can Africans really be serious that they need to have a solidarity and work for their people rather than attending conferences and presenting themselves as speeches or speak, speak makers? It becomes very, very, very unfortunate that there is a need for an African mindset and that the African mindset is the one that an African should learn to respect his own self. When guns are given to fight the enemy, I just want to tell you that Africans use them the guns against their own very people. We are just witnessing this afternoon the situation in Senegal while we have noticed what is going on in the Sudan. We have equally noticed what has been going on in Cameroon and whatsoever. Are we using those same guns to find neocolonialism of the West? But we use the same gun every day against our own very people. To what extent Russia bringing of weapons will not equally be an instrument of oppression and desertion of the same people that we are thinking to govern. Thank you very much, Dr. Akul. Thank you for throwing uh, your own opinion on this. So um, before we watch this video, which is a retrospect of what happened, we're going to watch a couple of them. But let me come to you, Mr. Patrick. Like, um, what do you think about the summit? The summit just ended. Most presidents have gone back home. Uh, is it starting over? or? What really happened there that you think this time around it's different and things are going to change? We've had such summits over and over. So, but what do you think is the need from, for Africa as uh, it just ended? We should take note that one of the things President Putin said this summit is going to help uh, Russia's uh, commitment in developing the African continent. How far do you think this is going to go? We'll be closely providing support to South Africa in organizing the summit of the BRICS later this summer. Ramaphosa described the Russia-Africa summit, which concluded on Friday, as very successful. Meanwhile, Putin has also met with a delegation from Burkina Faso in St. Petersburg after the conclusion of the Russia-Africa summit. The Burkina Faso's interim president, Ibrahim Traoré, has assured Putin of his country's friendship and support. At the Russia-Africa summit that took place in St. Petersburg, African nations have pressed Russian President Vladimir Putin to end the Ukraine war. They've called on Moscow to renew the Black Sea grain deal that it halted last week. The South African President Cyril Ramaphosa insisted the African leaders had in fact travelled to St. Petersburg to advocate for peace in Ukraine and to reopen the Black Sea for trade and not to plead for donations of grain to the African continent. But this comes after Putin's commitment at the forum that Russia will replace the Ukrainian grain supplies affected by its deal exit. Putin also said that he respects their proposal and has added that Moscow is increasing its food supplies to Africa, including the free grain shipments that he had announced earlier. Now, Putin had promised free grain supplies to six African nations, namely Eritrea, Mali, Burkina Faso, Zimbabwe, Somalia, and the Central African Republic. Now, remember, Eritrea and Mali are the only African nations to have repeatedly voted in Russia's favor in the United Nations General Assembly resolutions. Moreover, in both Mali and the Central African Republic, Russia's Wagner mercenary group remains active. Thank you very much for the report. Uh, sorry about that, uh, Patrick. Sorry about that. I was talking to you before the video came up. So I don't know if you heard my question about what it is for Africa at this point in time. Russia said they are going, they are willing to help Africa in its development. Do you think at this point it is going to work this time around or is necessary? First of all, we must, we must think about the image of Africa and about the image of this relationship between Russia and Africa. So in the Western medias before, there was also a very big shitstorm against Africa because they say, Russian yes, President so the, the people, people there are uh, uh, 
uh, only dictatorships there and, and the only poor countries and we must help them, we must develop their societies. And there was different programs from the West, but all this was not the help for the Africa. It was only to uh, colonize Africa. It was only for the interests of the West. And now many things are changing because Russia now is supporting these different countries in Africa for the sovereign interests and for independence from this Western correlationship, I say, yes. And this is very important. So we can see that, um, that uh, everything is changing in this century. And this century is not the century of the Western powers. It's a century of Russia, China, and other um, powers in the world. And this is very important that the people must know this. Everything now is changing. The, the, the whole security architecture, the different uh, treaties, the different markets, um, the societies also, the possibilities of communication, of transport. So um, now we are living in a, in a new world with different new possibilities. And these are really strategic factors. And um, I think this summit in, um, in Russia was not only one point. Many people in Europe say, no, not every uh, statesman, not every president was there from Africa, not every uh, state sent a delegation for this, um, for this meeting in Russia. So yes, it's the reality. But the other reality is that Russia works on different levels. They have political level, the level of economic uh, relationship, the level of people, people's diplomacy. And I'm many times invited in Russia. And when I'm there, in every conference, on different levels, there are people from Africa. There are politicians from Africa, businessmen from Africa, public figures. So, this is only um, the top of this uh, development, what's already working between Russia and Europe. And this is what we must see. This was a very high level meeting with Mr. Putin and other important persons, but it's still working. It's working since years. I meet people from Africa five years ago in Moscow. So this is the reality. This is the reality we must see. The world is changing. And uh, every month, there are delegations from Africa in Russia. And I think also there are every month different delegations from Russia in the different um, uh, African countries. So this is what's happened real. So I can uh, analyze it because I'm many times there and I can see every time people from Africa comes to the different uh, meetings, conferences in Moscow, St. Petersburg, or in other uh, Russian cities. This is the reality. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you for sharing your own view. Um, uh, Dr. Ako, he thinks um, things are different now with uh, the, the kind of relationship Russia is bringing with Africa. Definitely, we need partners. Every country, just like Europe, we have the Brexit. We had they, there's always partnership somewhere. So it's not like Africa wants to isolate itself. And most people think Russia coming in, it's going to be a win-win thing, and they are coming to not only take but give and take. Like there's this exchange, and so he thinks that uh, things are changing, and there's the new kind of communication, there's the new kind of sharing, and even business ideas that is going on. It's not like what we used to have the neo-colonialist attitude when we have paternalism or whatever they just want to take everything so he thinks it's better most people are now looking at it in that light that probably Russia is offering something better don't you think it, probably it's time that people give a chance towards that uh, we we have not denied there is no there is no problem in having new partners Africa need partners not only with Russia but with the rest of the world in various domains there is a need for sharing ideas and technology and how the world should advance Remember, in the year 2000, Ch the Chinese came mm -hmm. with a new impetus, and Africans too. They went in and followed the Chinese, and we hear of the Sino-African summit. Now, to the Russians have come 
We are having the, the, the Russo African summit. Very soon, the Indians are going to come. So we are going to have the, the Indiano African summit. But after all this summit, I have Africans and their leaders sat back to ask themselves why the scramble for Africa alone? Why the scramble for Africa alone? A continent in which 70 years after independence is still unable to fit itself. I mean, I say it seems like we are playing with children when Russia promises to give food, wheat, to six African countries for free. It was news breaking. And people look at, and others were thinking, why are they not within the list? Just imagine an African country that is unable to fit itself and moving out to ask for food. One of the most um, worrying issues, again, is where we think, yes, there are new dimensions. Business people will go where there are new dimensions. And it is not counseling when I heard, uh, I believe it's Patrick? Yes. yes. When I get him speak, he said, new businessmen, new politicians, new trade, which is normal. Russia has not been there as a major player. But we still continue asking. Russia has a lot of problems with its neighbors. I mean, the Russian government under Putin, today believe that even his neighbors should not exist. That is why we're having the, the, the Ukrainian war. We have seen uh, Putin carrying guns to South Ossetia. We have seen Putin march into Georgia several times. A lot of intimidation. And then comes later promising Africans. Why not promise liberty for those who are his neighbors first? Charity, the same begins at home. There is always that uh, a meaning that Russia is not even coming for Africa. He has promised security. What security are you promising? Who will pay the burden? It is what to the discussions and the conversation they have had has not given Africans. But all of us, to many, I mean the lay African that does not see, when you pass on the streets throughout from Cairo to maybe Abuja, Lagos, or Yaoundé, Central African Republic, Bangui, you will believe like Russia has come to salvage us. Russia has been the Messiah now to give us a new life. But who has explained to these people that the agreements and accord we are having with Russia today, you will pay and that your children will pay tomorrow. And then the natural resources you are claiming of having, that free food, that security they are giving to us. Wegner, Wegner is not working in Africa for free. Wegner is not a charity organization. If they are in Africa, there is a breakthrough. In terms of security, yes, there is a security problem. Who pays for it? And getting on new conventions in terms of trade and business, Russia is going to sign new conventions on trade. And that all will mean African resources, because it is not a take. It is a win-win, as I said. A win, I provide security, you give me the resources. And now, to how much are they going to pay? How much are they looting now in favor of Russia? And to what extent Russia will really develop Africa? Because I knew well that there are parts in Russia that are equally clamoring for liberation, that are equally clamoring for economic rights, that are equally clamoring for better treatment in the same country we call Russia. To what extent Russia will be capable of feeding close to 1.3 billion people in the African continent. When you see the man delegation, people went there, but I understood my brothers very well. A lot of them went to seek for loans, and those loans will never arrive at their destination. Will Russia not one point equally believe or behave like the West? Who gave loans, like he said, his non-interference policy is not to intervene in African domestic affairs. And so manage your loan as you wish. Whether your people are suffering is not a Russian concern. Whether they are dying, that is why you see the war in Cameroon. Russia has never mentioned it before the United Nations. The war in Sudan. We have never seen an action by Russia to stop the killing in Sudan. We are talking of the Central African Republic, where a lot have been killed. Okay? People will say it is Amnesty International. It's a Western organization. It's that Amnesty International. Is helping our relation, okay. Yeah, no, people will tell you that Amnesty International report of the crimes and the heinous, at a heinous level committed in Mali is just a, a counter force of uh, Western imperialism. But this is not the case. We need to be honest to what extent Russia will be capable of auto-evaluating its activities in Africa is what we will equally need. And to what extent that those activities have helped African, yes, he said liberation, 
Liberation somewhere come with the idea that the people are under oppression. And now the liberator are has come. Are they not under oppression, Dr. Akro? Are Sorry? they not under oppression? No. To my better knowledge, we are not under oppression. Because somewhere, he will tell you, they brought the politics of human rights mm -hmm. and liberation of the people. Mm -hmm. And then take your economy. I asked whether Russia is coming in to take just the air that we breathe. Or he has nothing to do with taking resources. No, but they, he has, it's, it's a win-win thing. That's what they said, Dr. Arko. That is, you cannot give something without taking back his business. The business is coming um, in. And definitely, Africa needs to pay. We should take note that a country like Central African Republic was well, following what is happening there. This is for the first time in many, many years that... Uh, the president Tuadira has been able to control half of the country because of the rebels that were there under the help of Russia. Yet I said the bargain is security. Mm -hmm. The bargain is security. What becomes of the economy? On what do we pay for the security we are receiving? And what is that but going I think, to I, we are stop? Claiming, we are claiming that we are independent. We are claiming that we. Yeah, there is no country. No, the word independent. That means we can pay for what we are no, taking. No, the, 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 the word independent is not absolute. There is nowhere independent of a nation. It's absolute. It is relative. Because the United States remain one of the most highly indebted country on earth. Which means equally, there are a lot of partners in the United States economy. China is a partner. When you go there now, you are telling you a win-win. Is that you take and give equally what you receive. And that is what is going on. Is this going to stop the mistreatment of African by Chinese companies, which we have noticed in Togo, in Sierra Leone, over, and many all, all over, over Africa. All over. So th when you talk of a win-win, and people say liberation, when we are instead robbing one Peter to call for Paul, how does that help me? You don't know where I'm going. My greatest idea and the wish for Africans is the change of the mindset. The change of the mindset of Africa that we can do better than any other person. Let those same leaders come back to Africa and declare to their people that all what we have stolen, all what we have looted, will invest it back in Africa. To change and see results, especially in terms of agricultural economy, it takes just between two or three years. Everybody will notice that there is a change. But to that extent, they have not done it yet. Some of them are unable to grant a common press conference in their countries. But you realize the way they spoke abroad. They were all present in front of media. Where is Africa? Where have we gone wrong? When we fail to respect our own very self. There is a need of what I call personification of the African people that we need to first of all know our value before we start getting to be respected in other places. It is not for nothing. When they talk, is I it, was is expecting... It, is it Russia's fault? That, that is what I said. It's is not it Russia's fault. That's why I said somewhere, I'm talking of the changing of the African mindset. Okay. That we should not think that the West we have. It's just like a businessman that realizes that he has partners all over the world. The moment the Americans are not treating him well, he, go in, he, he goes in for the Chinese. And you go, the same Chinese people, you realize that what you look like beautifully dressed outside is not really what you thought of. Go with the Chinese, it is possible to have an agreement with an American or European in respect the engagement. But I'm telling you that yeah, if a yeah. Chinese is a better beginning, he abandons you and takes that new trait. We need to get into a lot of that details, then understand the integrities of each and every character in terms of international employment. We need partners. I have even encouraged them that BRICS is coming. There's going to be a BRICS currency. We need to get in there. But then, somewhere to the AU, the African Union, the African Development Bank, needs its own currency. We don't need a BRICS currency to carry out trade. Can they still come back to Africa and Russia accept that rubble will not be used in Africa and that the, the Africans to develop their own currency and trade with Russians. And that currency should be used in paying trade between Russia and Africa. Is it going to be possible? Definitely, is it going to be possible? Um, um, Patrick, some of the concerns of Africans are like, yes, they are, uh, it's probably like people are traumatized with what has been happening in the past with other people in uh, the Western world, United States and, uh, and America, the uh, United States, America, British, France and the rest. So now Russia is coming in and everybody thinks that the same thing is going to be happening. It's like going around, coming around. But like Patrick is saying, some people probably they should give a chance and see some other things. Patrick, what do you think should be done at this time to probably make Africans think that Russia is coming out to do something different and they can actually have confidence in them? So first of all, I like to say that the words of the doctor are very hard, but I understand the very uh, bad situation of Africa because uh, it's a problem but first from the past. Because the problem of feeding the people 
it's not the problem of the Ukrainian war, because it was also a problem 10 years before. It's a problem about the history, because, because uh, Africa was under control of Western powers, and they're only uh, creating the infrastructure of Africa for, for, for their own interests, not for the interests of the people of Africa. This is the problem about the different problems in Africa. Also about the ethnic conflicts, because they are creating states not in interesting of the people as colonies. This is a problem. Also, in case of feeding the people, it's not a problem of the Ukraine war, I like to say. Now it's more worse than before, yes, but it's not the problem about this war. So, um, but I understand his, uh, his position and I think it's very bad situation for Africa now more than before, yes. Russia also finds solution, I think. But yes, it's not the it's not the duty for Russia to secure or to save Africa. It's not the duty for Russia because Russia has its own interests. But maybe these interests can be combined with the interests of the states of Africa. This is what's Putin now trying. Very important. I think, and I can say it from my experience when I'm dealing with the Russians. I think the Russians are more serious partners than the Western countries. But it's not propaganda, it's only an analyst about my personal experience. So, and um, what, what, what was the question? I uh, forget because uh, it was very uh, hard uh, uh, dialogue now. What was the question? That this time around is going to be different. As you said, um, from your personal experience, you think that the Russians are better partners or serious partners compared to the Western countries like in Europe and in the United States. That is from your own personal experience. You think they have more to give and so people can believe in what they are coming in for and that they will give back to the society. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, but, but it's also a, a question not only about interest and about geopolitical interest or for strategy, it's only a question of the um, atmosphere and the, the, um, the, how people are thinking about the thinking. Very important. The people in the East are, have other thinking than the people in the West. And this transatlantic American English uh, way of life, also what the people in France are thinking, it's the other direction, another direction than the people in the East are creating their concepts. Or uh, it's also a question of mentality, yes? And um, I think Africa only experienced with the Western mentality of colonialism, about occupation and something else. But now we are not living in the, in the century of occupation. You can see. It's not the same like 200 years before. Uh, Russia not occupate some uh, some countries. So now they're saying they occupate, make occupation about Ukraine. And so it's not occupation. They are securing the people in the east of Ukraine. Also, our friend here, our doctor, uh, talk about Abkhazia and South Ossetia. I'm the representative of the Republic of South Ossetia in Austria. And they can say the Russians secure the lives of the people in South Ossetia. So Russia have, has his own security interest direct on the border, but not in the whole world. So there is no occupation in Africa by the Russians, but there was occupation in Africa by the Brits, the French, Dutch, but not by the Austrians. We have no colonies in Africa. Also by the Germans. Yes, but this is a different situation now. Now, the, the influence also, yes, also the influence, it's on the level of economy, diplomacy, but not military. The doctor also talked about Wagner. Okay, Wagner is not a humanitarian organization, but it's not news because everybody knows it. So uh, I think, and 
so I like to also um, um, say that uh, the doctor said many write about this. Africa must find his own way. It's very important to develop everything for their own interests. And it's, it's time now. Africa must build structures for their own interests, to protect their own interests. All African countries must build one block in this geopolitical crisis we are now living. This is important. And with this, they can find solutions to feed the people, to have security and no wars more than before, and also to stay on the lands of powers that come from abroad. Against every powers. First, I think, against the Western powers, because with these powers, Africa has not very good in, in, in history in the past. And I think everybody can uh, recognize this in Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Um, Dr. John, you just listen to him like it's time for Africans to come to a block because if they speak like a block, as you said, the United States is indebted. They take the loan and they develop their country. They owe the money, but their country is developed. So it is not a bad thing for us to look for the loan, but like the loan should be used in the right way and we develop our country. Uh, do you want Russia to come to Africa and maybe they give you a hundred francs and then check how the hundred francs is used till the end? Is that what we are saying? Uh, to my opinion, somewhere, I believe there is a civil responsibility from the Russian authority to even check those weapons sent to Africa. That the weapons we sent to Africa for what purpose and where are they to be used? Is there is an area and that such weapons should not go out? We are told that the fallout in Libya are responsible for the uprising of insecurity in the Sahel. Mm -hmm. That after the fall of Muammar Gaddafi, even the migration crisis in Europe, we are talking now, double, that yeah. the killing and dying over the Mediterranean is the absence of a stronger security force which Muammar el Gaddafi represented. Mm -hmm. And nobody will come now to maybe tell the African continent that we are very sorry that we killed a leader, somebody that was capable of protecting the whole of the Mediterranean. And his death has not only caused pain to the Europeans, whom thought he was a tyrant, it is equally causing pain to Africans, because we are the one dying now. Yes, just the recent report, with the change of target or directions, we are told that for this year alone, which is still going to an end, we have lost more than 780 migrants in Tunisia, because this is a new road. When we have strong leadership, when we encourage self-development, that Africa is capable of developing itself. A lot of those things will not exist. Some time ago, we realized that Mali was stable. And when the war ended in Libya, nobody has an auto evaluation of where the weapons have gone to. Likewise, we are equally afraid now that the amount of weapons being sent into Ukraine may create another regional war, even at the end of the Ukrainian so Ukrainians uh, by both, conflict. By both parties, right? The Russian and that the That is what we are saying. Yeah. But you will find yourself that the United States at some point had to give an order to Cameroon that the fight against Boko Haram should not be looked upon as the same fight against the Northwest and the Southwest. And that weapons that were given to Boko Haram should not be weapons found in the Northwest and the Southwest. Such um, strategic planning in weapons use may help us also to understand that the Russians are serious. But it will become funny that the weapons that are used, given by Russians, are used even to intimidate political opponents. They are used even, again, to intimidate civil society organizations and their leaders, and that even the press, that a lot have been victims. To some extent, we are saying that so Russia should be capable of giving a tack tack, a one-on-one, -on -one one by one aspect in terms of assistance. People need a bridge, we construct a bridge. That is what the Chinese are doing. But it becomes very, very funny again at times when Exim Bank equally warrants people to pay in Chinese currency because that is the bank. When you give a loan, you say 31 billion. The 31 billion which China has given to a company from China, it is paid through Exim Bank. They come, the company simply comes to Africa and execute the job. Nobody sees the money. We don't know if really the job worth 31 billion. But then it's the, with the Americans, they put the money into your account. And then taxing traces of who has stolen money where. 
And it becomes possible that somewhere, people say they use the fight against corruption still as a neo-colonialist policy in controlling African leaders. They give you the money, they allow you to use it, then come back after you that you have stolen the money. So, but then, it is possible. Somewhere, you find Russia telling you that money once given, assistance once given, becomes your internal issue. And so it doesn't concern me where and what do you do with the money because every state is looked upon as that's sovereign. sovereign, state, sovereign that, state. That's true, Doc. No, the sovereignty. Sovereignty, like I said, mm -hmm. with, um, I can I call independent, sovereignty is not absolute. Sovereignty is relative because for you to be sovereign, you still need assistance from other groups. And every group has is what I call uh, uh, terms of reference. When you borrow money from the IMF or the World Bank, there are terms of reference which you must make up to. This money is distinct for the less privileged. And we want to see the life of the less privileged, which we know in your country, inference have been made, improved. If the life is not improved, then the money is surely somewhere. A lot of projects have been abandoned in Africa because such terms of references have not been made. And it is but normal. And you see people again crying. You can imagine what happened with Agua in Cameroon some few, few years back. It is normal that when Agua gives an advantage, if you cannot meet up, they suspend the advantages. And that becomes possible with other domains. Will the Russian add to, to some extent, like the Japanese? Because some days, sometime, we have noticed that the Japanese have become teachers of how to catch fish rather than giving us fish. When you need a school, they come and build a school for you. Right there. You need a bridge, they put a bridge for you. Yes, so many people said, in the aspect of economy, the Russians are not implicated as a nation. Russian government and under Putin has its, I call, the bourgeoisie. He tried to push forward in Africa. It is not the government of Russia. So it tells you to get to Africa, search, search where you can get in and exploit for our own greatness. And one of it, we are not uh, doubting that Mali was well cited because it has a huge deposit of gold. Central African Republic is not out of that. It has gold and diamond. Now, with the movement in Niger, and when Putin sat and said we condemned, and you find the, the, the leader of Wagner Group telling you that he congratulates the courage and the effort of the military in Niger, we know already that Russia too is looking for uranium. Russia is out for more economic impact to empower its own self. So security first, so that it protects the interests of Russian businessmen in Africa. And it is but normal that in, within the world movement today, Africans should be honest to themselves. Do we really need these things or that? Do we need economy? Do we need arms? Do we need, uh, how can I say, security? Yes, security we need because of what happened in the Sahel. When you look at it, the map is going from Mali to Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso to Niger, somewhere down, you'll find Chad. And so where is it going to let? Be very careful that that same movement may twist around to Central Africa. It will not go up north because the northerners are already conscious. Russia will not do this action in Morocco, in Algeria, or in Tunisia. Russia will not do it in Egypt. Why the fight for the sub-Saharan Africa? Because this is where we still believe that the resources and the people in their brain and mindset are still wayward. We need to think otherwise. Why the scramble for sub-Saharan Africa? Down, you find South Africa, which is now considered as already an assimilated person with a, a whole European tendency. He has his own security. Yes, to that extent, it is the lone country in South of the Sahara that produces its own weapons. Meaning the others, including their sheds, the way for, for military battle is coming from abroad. Very soon, such military gadgets will be provided by the Russians. It gives us a lot of idea. It is not, like I said, it's not given on a platter of gold. The engagement Dr. is that Arco, Africans I, should be cautious. At this point, what do you, what, what would you prefer that the Russians do better? Because the business is there. People want to work with them. They work a little bit different, and people are thinking that this is better than what they have always had before. You know, you go for something better. If you have five business people in front of you, you have worked with this one. It does not, it, it did not work. It does not mean you're going to stop. You're going to continue working with those you think they are better and bring other ideas. At this point, Africa is trying to work with Russia. What do you, or what is the approach you think they should take, or what should they do, which to you is going to be better? What I'm saying here, like at the very beginning, we are going in for a new partnership. Yes. But let not believe as if the new partnership is the liberator we need. 
It should be a partner like any other partner. We have the Chinese, like I told you. Yes. Our markets are flooded. Mm -hmm. I was talking this morning that Cameroonians have learned from the Chinese so fast than they have ever learned in any place again. You put six cubes of sugar in a teacup, tea is still, I mean, resolute. No taste. Meaning in the home, you can consume a packet of sugar within two days. If everybody has to use eight cubes of sugar, this is a Chinese system. It makes you to spend more. To spend more. And in the same, in cost, Which you is think, not good. <laughs> and you think you are spending less. Yes. The character of dumping of Chinese product in Africa, because you buy a TV set. When I was growing up, the TV set we had, I have never known whether they repair it. Because that TV set, as I was born, they put it on, put it off. I have never seen a technician for repairs. But today, when you get a Chinese system or whatsoever TV, you put it at home. Be sure that if one month, it takes him one month, it is too much. So when you go to dumping, dumping ground, what do you find? A lot of waste. We just imported uh, President Paul Bia Hair Education Vision computers sometime in 20, 2016. And I'm telling you, nobody has one of those computers with him again. Where have they ended up? Are they done? We, we, we should be very careful with the engagement and the aggrandizement we are giving to certain partnerships. Yes, we used to buy an Okada, the local language, a motorbike with the Europeans for 1.5 million. And that bike can save you a lifetime because you will grow up and your father is still having that bike for more than 18 or 15 years. Is that a partnership we want? Where Africans or become a dumping ground for waste or the continent where serious things are made and we are taught to do the right things. I said uh, longevity with time will re or will realize whether the Russians are for good or for evil, all partnerships are welcome. Mm -hmm. But then we should not present like the other one is better than this. So many Africans have been, when you move on the streets of Douala, some people seeing the Russians, it's like you have brought a new player into a squad. Imagine Cristiano Ronaldo going for Ali Al. The whole, camp, the whole town came out to see that this is the Messiah we have been waiting. It is the same which and enthusiasm Africans are having now. But we should be very careful. Behind every convention sign, international diplomacy, I said it's not given on a platter of gold. There are consequences. And tomorrow when those consequences start coming, we should not blame anybody. We were responsible. Go in other countries, you have seen people striking for a law to be passed. People striking for a particular partnership. In Africa, we have seen people coming out with Russian flags, uh, uh, clapping and clamoring. It is what they need. It is a new age, it's a new time. We carry those same flag with the Chinese. Today I have videos and audios on my page where Chinese are mistreating and misguiding Africa. So we need to think very well. Let's go on to the level. I would think a summit of this nature where all African leaders would displace to discuss Africa. How do we handle electricity in the next five years? We can produce, uh, develop a dam in Ethiopia that can save the whole of North Africa energy so that every town villages and quarter should be electrified we can produce drinking water in the congo using river congo and give drinking water to the whole of central africa this is african empowerment yes somewhere uh, the, 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 the zimbabweans south of africa are suffering from irrigation lands fields are dry how do we get irrigation to water crops in zimbabwe because it's a ground for wheat so that wheat problem should not be coming from Ukraine. And in fact, we are going to take it from Ukraine, a country at war. And when we are peaceful, we are unable to eat. There is a problem. So we need to solve African problems the way they present themselves. There is a need for a new leadership in Africa. I want to see equally that somewhere President Putin should think if Russia needs to succeed in Africa, not with the old heads he has around him in the just ended summit. Some of them will just forget everything that was discussed just after the summit. So there is a need for new leadership in Africa. That is what we have been saying. Because most of those leaders, you find them, have the same old outdated memories of the old system. That what we do is, we hijack, we take, we kill anybody that opposes us. And that's what has kept them in power for long. We need to otherwise develop the economies of Africa, like we have said, agriculturally. First, our people must eat. Technology transfer. We have a lot of Africa. Setting a company to produce arms, let Russia bring it to Africa. Produce those arms in Africa so that our brothers and sisters too can learn the technology. Bringing us a computer from St. Petersburg 
from uh, Moscow will not help us. Set on the factory here so that we, if we need petroleum, you are extracting gold, transform the gold on the spot so that we too. Such agreements are what we call the win-win, but not the one that they will carry gold in the name of grass and then go and refine it or cocoa in the name of cocoa, then bring chocolate and we buy it more than the price. It is not a new convention. That is not a win-win. You are not changing anything. You are simply putting all wine into what? Into all containers and nothing will change. There is a need for a new leadership if Russia needs to be honest. Why not? I know a lot of people were in Russia, even opposition parties in Africa to are signing new conventions, whether Russia can identify them as a new political leaders to work with. But it will not go, because Russia has its operation. It has nothing to do with the internal politics of nation. And so if diplomacy, diplomacy stay with your leader. If you stay there for 65 years, make it a kingdom, what is their problem if their interests are still present? Thank you very much, Doug. We're almost at the end of the program. One last question for you, uh, Mr. Patrick. What next? What do you think people should expect at this point? The summit has ended. Everybody has gone back home. Many things Not were everybody. signed. Mr. You should say many are still in St. Petersburg. Yeah, Why many are But the summit has ended. And so those who went for the summit are back home. And then those who had other things to do are there for other reasons. That one now is not on Russia's plate anymore. They know why they are there. So our focus is on the summit. The summit has ended. People have gone back home. They spoke about humanitarian activities, how to support and develop African countries, the countries that have war, how the Black Sea should be liberated so that wheat and other grains can cross against, uh, cross to the other African countries countries and Putin promised that he was going to look into the situation and then talked about arms and the support of African countries. So at this point, how fast do you think these things can go through and uh, what Dr. Ako said about them bringing those things to do here, what do you think about it? So before I answer, I like to say I think our doctor is very emotional, but uh, I think uh, I understand because he's fighting for his continent and for the people of Africa. And so I recognize this uh, very fast that um, he understand also that uh, it's very important to solve the problems of Africa in Africa. It's a very important thing. So they must also grow up their own agriculture because they should not depend on uh, delivery from Ukraine. Yes, it's a very freaky situation to, to not a continent couldn't feed their own people. It's a very big problem, and for this must be a solution. Uh, but it's about your question. I think um, Russia will develop new structures for um, the dialogue on the level of business and on other levels with these um, countries, they are take part on the summit. But also, I say it on the beginning that there are different other contexts, also to states, they are not take part on this uh, meeting now. So the influence of Russia, I think, will be more strong than before. This is my analysis. And it will be also developed in the future. And also we can see this factor that also the, the West, first France, but also other countries, will left Africa step by step because um, they will lose this, this economic fight against Russia and China. And this will also uh, have results for the policy in Africa and for the context and the um, influence of the West in Africa. This is my analysis. Yes. But so on. The important thing is that Africa needs partners, yes. Uh, but also Africa must grow up their own structures on the national level to develop their economy, their agriculture, also very important, and uh, the whole African continent must create structures to
to defend their interests of all these African countries against the influence of other powers. This is very, very important. I'm not the advocate for the Russian interest, and I'm not the advocate for the Western interest. <laughs> you can believe me. But um, I think the policy of Africa and the future of Africa has been the hands of the people of Africa and not in the hands of the former masters, but also not in the hands of other powers that like to have influence in Africa or they are showing about uh, searching about um, resources or something else. The interests of Africa must be in the, in the hands of the people of Africa. This is my conclusion. Mr. Patrick Popel, thank you for your time. We have come to the end of the program. It's a one hour program. So we have come to the end of the program. Dr. Aku, thank you very much for joining us on this edition. <laughs> yeah, the pleasure is mine. You know, I realized I was too brief. Yes. But consciously, Africa needs a new mindset mm -hmm. that the continent first and any other person is a third party. Definitely. That the life of the people of in Africa matters. Definitely. Not security type of weapons and targeted instances not used on every individual. Definitely. Africa first. But as you said, Africa also need partners. partners we yeah. should choose our partners wisely and those who treat us well. We should work with them. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. Thank you for joining us on the program. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. Thank you for joining us. Stay teaching programs on African media. Tomorrow the program will go on same time. Stay teaching programs on African media. Have a beautiful day.